Okay, we're back here live at the Fluent Conference. I'm John Furrier from SiliconANGLE. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and talk to thought leaders, entrepreneurs, startups. Uh, anyone who has the signal, we'll try to share that with you. We're here for day two in San Francisco for the Fluent Conference, put on by O'Reilly Media. Go to O'Reilly Media for great, great content, great data, all the streams. Go to siliconangle.com. You'll see the streams there, as well as blog posts and ongoing coverage of, of the developer world. Um, and uh, I love going to these conferences for many reasons. One, you can see what developers are working on on uh, around the corner, get a peek around the corner and kind of connect the dots. And we've been doing that all week, but also want to talk to startups. And I think, you know, we, we heard from Splunk, which kind of evolved from a startup. They're now a public company. We obviously, Google's here. Uh, but we have a startup here, um, Concurrent Inc. Gary Nukamara, from, uh, CEO of Concurrent, uh, just closed their Series A funding with Rembrandt Ventures and prominent VC in Ray and Puneet at True Ventures. Um, congratulations and welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it. Um, I love having startups on because, you know, startups have to be lean and mean, but also work hard, build a good product market fit and then go out and build that out and then grow, do your Series B and put the growth strategy together. That's your job as the CEO. You have uh, a company that's been doing a lot of good product work and the seed funding. We've been following you guys on, uh, on, uh, on our side. We've been watching you guys and uh, now you have Series A and you're kind of putting it all together. You're playing in the big data space where developers are building apps and uh, it's hard to kind of describe. So first, Gary, talk about the uh, the update on Concurrent, the company, um, and what happened with the funding, what's kind of going on with the company. And then talk about the marketplace, because you know, big data developers are really focused on analytics today, but it's fast evolving to integrating into legacy databases, kind of the service layers, kind of a, you know, kind of integration, a lot of interesting cloud and mobile uh, integrations, all kinds of new things are happening. So talk about Concurrent, and then talk about what you see in the market. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks again for having me. Um, so, uh, Concurrent was founded in 2008 by uh, Chris Wenzler, who's also the uh, core contributor to the framework uh, called Cascading. Um, 75,000 downloads, a very popular framework for building applications on top of Hadoop. Um, it's bootstrapped until about 2010, and at the end of 2010, uh, Chris went and got some seed funding from True Ventures and, and Rembrandt, uh, which uh, then brought us to um, present day, um, and recently we closed the Series A uh, to uh, boost up the engineering effort and, and really focus on um, adding additional value to uh, the users and the uh, deployed applications. Uh, um, that what is the product? What is the, is the platform? Is it uh, software development kits, APIs? The, what the, is the front end, um, the, the open source a product is a, a development framework. So it makes it really easy for, it's called cascading, and it makes it really easy for developers, uh, people who know SQL, or um, any data scientist to deploy an application on Hadoop in, in a very short amount of time. Um, so we're taking the, the massive adoption that we have with the, with the framework, and we're uh, commercializing uh, some of the value, not the framework, but we're actually adding software uh, value adds to it. So management, monitoring capabilities, be able to share applications, so on and so forth. And so in the big in the big data space, everyone talks about analytics becoming the new programmer, and that's simply more of the guys doing the BI kind of reports. Um, but talk about the platform requirements for the enterprise relative to app developers. Because that is really ultimately where the where the puck is going, right? As they say, you know, people are skating to where the puck is. Silicon uh, Valley adage. So, so you guys are building a platform that is an advanced platform for big data applications. What is that market look like? What what's the current state of app developers, and and what are you guys doing to build a product there? So, um, you know, big big data. The 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 business problem that big data created was very disruptive. Um, and Hadoop came in because it's a very economical way to store that data, scale it, access it, so on and so forth. Building applications on top of Hadoop was very difficult. That's what uh, our founder, Chris Wenzel, saw very early on. And so one of the things he did was he created the framework so that you would have a separate business logic layer from the data layer. And he made it very logical so you can actually, it's, it's written in Java, so any Java programmer can pick it up. It's, um, it's logical, you know. It's it's got a, a plumbing metaphor, so you know, uh, yeah. very logical from a, from that perspective. Um, the the requirements for the enterprise is not to learn new skills for 
uh, to adopt Hadoop, but to actually leverage existing skills and existing systems and existing uh, investments that they already made in uh, their infrastructure. So um, human resource in, uh, investments and in skills like in SQL or uh, you know investments in, in thing, BI tools like uh, SAS Institute or MicroStrategies, they want to leverage all of these things but also get the goodness of Hadoop. And they also want to be able to actually very quickly build applications uh, that represent their uh, IP onto Hadoop. So one of the things, obviously, that we're seeing here at the Fluent Conference, and which, by the way, is put on by O'Reilly Media, which you guys have a book coming out, we'll talk about in a second, uh, called Cascading, written by uh, Paco Nathan, one of your uh, your uh, engineers and, and guys over there, at gurus over there at uh, uh, Concurrent. But one of the things that's coming out of this is the maturization of JavaScript, which has been around for a while and it's not going anywhere, but the API and the protocols of REST APIs really changed the game uh, for developers. You're seeing a lot more server side, more database integration with JavaScript. Um, how does your platform work into that construct? Because obviously AP, everything's going to be API, and, and as Dave Vellante, my co-host, always says, the future of the data center is going to be, give me an API to the data center. Um, and that's kind of the way the mindset is moving right now in some of the tech elite circles. So how does your platform work with that API construct? So um, in, the, in the JavaScript world, we, we leverage JavaScript uh, uh, heavily um, on, the, on the back end as well as on the, on the front end UI uh, for, our, for our commercial monitoring product. Um, and um, it's a, you know, but your platform has got APIs in it as well for developers? That's right. Um, so there's a, a couple different sets of APIs, but for to build applications, there's a Java API, C, a SQL interface, and a, and a machine learning interface. You guys offer um, an SDK for developers? That's right, we do. Uh, it's the cascading SDK. It comes, it comes with uh, the, the framework uh, plus a bunch of tools that you need to uh, stand up an application. So, how, so, so give me, the, give me the, um, the process of how a developer would want work with you guys. So give us the, the use case and, and the value proposition. I'm a developer, um, how do I, why would I want to work with Concurrent? What would be some of the things I could do? So um, Concurrent, the framework actually is, is mul it, multiple things. It's uh, the, the applications that you can build are um, it's kind of soup to nuts it's from ETL so getting the data into, uh, preparing the data and getting it into Hadoop, and then extracting the data um, either via analytics or running models or, or so on and so forth. And, and you can, the developer would interface multiple ways. Um, if you're a Java developer, it's a simple Java API. You just you know, read the documentation and there's a, a set of APIs and you can program to it. And then um, if, you're, if you understand SQL, um, if you want to actually hook uh, cascading up to an existing system, or if you just want to write uh, ANSI compliant SQL, then um, that's another way that you can on-ramp onto Hadoop um, via cascading. And lastly, if you're a data scientist and you want to run models on top of, of cascading, you just export uh, the model from your favorite tool, PMML, and drop it onto cascading, and it generates the uh, necessary uh, application to run your models on, on, on Hadoop. So basically it's an ease of use in, in issue for you guys. You guys are proposing ease of use into that into that world. We, yes, um, tr tr traditionally uh, developing uh, applications on Hadoop at the lower level APIs has been very, very difficult. Um, and you'd have to learn new skills and you have to be highly skilled to actually go and do that. Um, we're, we're focused on making sure that it's easy for the mainstream enterprise to leverage cascading and build applications um, and leverage their existing systems, that, uh, systems and investments that they made over the last 20 so let's years. Talk about, let's talk about SQL because one of the things that was hot at Hadoop World um, and Strata, Hadoop World last year was um, SQL on Hadoop. It was like you got Impala, you got SQL, you got uh, Hadapt and a bunch of other companies coming out uh, saying this is the big thing. Is it a big deal? I mean, it seems to me it's more of a kind of compatibility model for the existing enterprises. Um, how big of a deal is the SQL piece? The SQL pizza uh, is very big. I mean, obviously, there's I, I don't know how install many, base more than it's 10x of Java. I mean, it's it's massive. easily it's it's massive. Um, you know, data analysts uh, can write SQL, but can't can't write Java, right? So um, it, it's it's almost like English. It's a common yeah. language across the development world. It's been around for 40 years, so it's it's a must have. It's a must have for if. If Hadoop is going to cross over into um, the mainstream kind of skill set, SQL was absolutely imperative for them to do that um, as the first step. And um, 
we implemented it because uh, it was very it's very easy to we, we actually took it a step further we did an ANSI compliant SQL which which is means you can actually hook it up to a JDBC driver and um, have a system talk to uh, Hadoop so um, we have a you know t test suite internally that is something like 7,000 7,000 tests and uh, to test joins and so on and so forth and um, that's uh, worked out great for us. Uh, I want to put a plug in for Insuk Ray, who's a VC at uh, Rembrandt Ventures, your investor. Uh, great, great technical uh, VC. He still writes code. We're doing a segment later today on VCs who still write code, and he's one of them. I see Mark Andreessen and a few others. We'll, we'll talk about that. But, but um, you know, we always talk about the cloud being the mainframe, and Paul Moritz talked about that in you know, 2010 when he was at VMware. Mainframe of the future is software mainframe is back. It's the cloud. <laughs> it's just in a different way. Um, I had a CIO just tweet, tweet me, Donald Cox. I uh, said, mainframe computing 2013. Question mark. Huge need, querying slash making demands for info for data. Don't forget processing needs of analytical tools. What does he mean by that? What's your take? If you read that tweet, you know, okay, he's saying mainframe computing question mark, okay, he's buying a little bit of the story, but he's saying the huge need for querying and making demands for the information of the data. And the processing needs of the tools. That's been kind of a complaint for Hadoop. Bin batch. Yeah. Cloudera is trying to come out with Impala. He's right, right. What's your take, given your experience in the industry and kind of where you are now on the cutting edge with Concurrent? You know, that's that CIO saying, I have needs. Yeah. What so, are, what, what's uh, your let, take on that me, tweet? Uh, well, let me give you an example of a use case where, where we've tied in um, the, the various use cases of, um, in, the, in the mainstream enterprise. So. Um, one of the one of the big challenges of, of accessing this data. Part of it is he's talking about is access, right? So, um, okay, so we invest in Hadoop. Uh, how do I get at it? And the, the problem is you got to go hire the rocket scientist to go build the application to extract stuff out of it. That's why SQL is so important. Now, what we've done is because we've Im implemented ANSI compliant SQL, you can take R or MicroStrategies. You can actually uh, run a query through that tool. Now probably spent you know, $10 million on MicroStrategies already, right? So you can hook a JDBC driver up to Hadoop via that, make your query, bring that into your tool, run, train your models, and then once you train that model, you can actually then export that model back through uh, cas to cascading and then run the model on, on Hadoop. And you could do that in 24 hours. That's unheard of. Versus what would be the alternative? Go hire a Java developer and and somebody who understands months. Pig and Hive months. Months, yeah. I mean, and, we, and and testing is near impossible because Hadoop is just generally a black box. Yeah, and I think you know we we were at the we had the cube at Sapphire SAP Sapphire show in Orlando a couple weeks ago, and you know Hana is getting a lot of buzz because of the quote speed. Mm -hmm. Now there's different use cases for Hana, and we'll, we'll, we are, we're researching that. But you know they were talking about 26 days to 26 seconds to run a query. Mm -hmm. Now they're loading up a lot of stuff in RAM, and again, there's, there's all kinds of arguments around that, but again, that's the kind of game-changing notion. 26 days to 26 seconds. Mm -hmm. You're talking about potentially months to a day to run a complex data analysis. Right, so they're talking about latency, we're talking about time to time to market. Time, time to, to value. Your, time, time, to, time to go and look at your data, extract value out of your data. It still might be, um, we don't actually solve the latency problem, we solve the time to productivity, time to get your application deployed and go look at your data and start extracting value out of it. We, saw yeah. it, we solve that problem. But that's not, a, that's not a use case for latency. It's not like I need this report now. It's a pretty much known thing that it, they need to do. Yeah, right, it's a use, uh, cascading's more of a use case for, uh, we've invested a lot of money in Hadoop and we need to stand up a bunch of applications quickly. So I got to ask you, you guys are playing in a world that's very disruptive. Obviously the data warehousing business intelligence market has been uh, been kind of this fenced out, send the data out and you know, months to get some developers or run some pre-canned queries, bring the data back and try to work on it through other techniques. What's the current market for, for now? What's the use cases now where, you know, that where, where the disruption is on data warehousing and business intelligence? You're mentioning a little bit there. Can you share more data around, or information that you can share around the current dynamics that are disrupting the data warehousing business intelligence market? Um, the, on the business intelligence side, there's um, a, you know, there's a, a 
many, many companies out there that are you know, building that kind of capability in the cloud. And many of them are actually using Hadoop and cascading to build that service in the cloud. So in the BI world, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, on the kind of in-house in data, uh, data warehousing world, um, you know, there are a lot of companies that are, have invested pretty heavily in, in the infrastructure that, uh, data warehousing infrastructure. Um, they are looking for alternatives, cheaper, better alternatives to actually, uh, you know, query their data. And you're, you're talking, you know, orders of magnitude cheaper to store the data in Hadoop, but not orders of magnitude cheaper to actually get at the data. And that's the problem that we're solving. So, um Obviously, uh, for the folks that are watching that might not know SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, our research and our publishing site, we cover the hyperscale market. And as Insuk knows, we used to be called WebScale. Hyperscale is kind of the web companies. Now the enterprises are trying to do hyperscale. And they're trying to get to the open source scale out, obviously more infrastructure trends. On your website, I noticed you have a lot of logos there. Etsy, Twitter, Airbnb. Are those customers of yours? Are those partners? Th those are users. Those are users of your product, they, platform. They use, they use cascading. All right, so those, are, those aren't like no names, they're, they're big they're, names. They're, Etsy they're, is probably one of the best big data examples out there. Absolutely. Pretty complex. Ed, Etsy's got you know 50 plus applications, cascading applications, from ETL to funnel analysis to machine learning type applications that they have deployed. Uh, you know, Twitter's got a, a, you know a dozen applications. Why, uh, that why are they? Why are they? Why are they working with you guys? What's the main? aha moment, because those, those names are indicator to me that the, enterpri the enterprise follows those guys. I mean, we're seeing with open source, these guys have to build their own <laughs> broad tools and use whatever's on the market to kind of do that. There's no off the shelf software for these guys. So they're a bellwether in terms of I'm concerned. Concern. So why, why are they working with you guys? Uh, um, there's a couple points here. Um, one, uh, f from, the, from the enterprise perspective, um, I think the, the enterprises should take note of, of Twitter and Etsy and Airbnb and, and these companies that have, uh, have used cascading for a number of reasons, but the one main one is that they've actually, they were, they were very early on on Hadoop, and they went through all the pains of trying to operationalize and build applications that they needed to extract value out of the data that they were receiving, and, and they've, they evolved from there to saying, okay, well, we need to be able to separate the logic from the data and operationalize the application part of, of the, the um, extracting you know, analytics or ETL, et cetera. And so um, the, the net of it is that they actually went through an evolution of, of figuring out um, how to operationalize their Hadoop infrastructure. Um, and they found cascading as a great way to do that because you can build it, test it, and deploy it uh, very easily. Yeah, and like any open source project, we were, we've been users of HBase, and you know, the, the, in the trials of tribulation, it's been fantastic. It's also been frustrating. Right? You want the promise, you get some, see some immediate benefits, then there's a huge maintenance issue, right? You got to waiting for the open source to ratchet up the code base, and you got also the demands of the business. Is that kind of the dynamic? Not necessarily HBase, but is that kind of some of the dynamics that you're seeing that you guys are addressing? Is that hey, these guys are adopters and they're using it, and they just need better, robust, stable code? Or is it something different? Uh, they need that, um, but they but they need a more reliable way of building applications. That's that's the net of it. Um, yeah. They, they a more reliable, logical way of building applications. Um, you know, there's an API. It's a set of APIs. It's not. They can they understand. They can read the code and they can understand what's going on. Okay, Gary. Next, uh, we're getting the uh, the time slot here. So, the last question for you is: What's next for Concurrent? You guys have a great traction. Obviously, Series A, bootstrap company. I love this here startups that are bootstrapped. It's fantastic. Testament to the founders. You got two great investors with uh, True Ventures and and Rembrandt. Your new CEO. You get fresh money. How much was the funding amount? Can you talk about the amount? Was it? Yeah, it was four million. Four million. So yeah. you get some you know good cash. Not a lot. So you got to be lean. What's next for Concurrent? So we're focused on building the the, the next the, the next phases. We're we're focused on building the, the value adds on for, on deployment. So um, we've got uh, thousands of deployments and and tens of thousands of users of Cascading, and they're uh, very rapidly building applications, whether they're ETL or analytics. One of the big challenges is that they want to know what's going on with their application. Um, did it start? Did it stop? Did it fail? What part of the process is it in? Um, so on and so forth. So we're going to be able to extract that value and, and uh, expose that to the users so that they have better visibility into the applications that they deploy. 
Okay, uh, Gary Nukamara with uh, ConcurrentInc.com. Concurrent has cascading, building an application a platform uh, for application development for big data in the enterprise and beyond. They have some great clients, Twitter, Etsy, great examples. Again, hot startup uh, here at Fluent Conference. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly. I'm John Furrier from SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back.